Hi everybody, Rob here again at Power Learning Solutions with some more tips and tricks on how to format your APA format assignment submissions to make sure that uh, they're formatted properly and that you meet all document accessibility requirements. What I've got here in front of me is a uh, an anonymized sample paper submitted to me by a student. And uh, there's, uh, there are some issues in this paper, some of them uh, from the draft submission that the student gave me, some of them that I added in deliberately for the sake of creating this assignment and showing you how to fix up some common mistakes. So uh, the first thing that I'm noticing here uh, that needs to be fixed is the formatting for the title page. It looks like it's okay, it's centered, it's got all the uh, appropriate information, but a simple check with my cursor shows me it's not really an accessible document. Um, it has too many blank lines on it. And what's going to happen is anyone who's using a screen reader application, they're going to get blank line, blank line, blank line read out to them every time they hit one of those blank lines. You want to avoid that. So I'm just going to delete all of those blank lines that are in here uh, and all of this extra space that's in between. You do not want any of that extra space because it's going to create uh, that issue. You, uh, you'll notice here that there's lots of extra blank lines in. If you want blank lines between your document, between your, um, uh, between any of the lines in your document, you want to actually format this using the paragraph formatting. You're going to go to your line spacing and you can pick a single 1.5 double. I'll pick 1.5 for our purposes here to show you that you can add those extra lines in without uh, actually having blank lines in there. I'm going to delete the rest of these as well too. You don't want to create a new page by using your enter key that creates an accessibility problem. Uh, so the abstract is going to be the next thing here. And you'll notice that there's lots of blank lines added uh, for spacing as well. Uh, so that's going to need to be sorted out. We'll need to do some work with the table of contents. Uh, so I will go ahead and put a hard return here. It's control enter is the, uh, the keystroke that you use to add a hard return, uh, a page break return and create a new blank page. Uh, you don't use your enter key to do that because that does create that document accessibility issue. So every time you want to start a new section, use control enter. Okay, the next thing I'm going to fix on here is how to make this cover page actually centered. You'll notice that I have my heading here for the abstract. I want that on the next page. I left that there deliberately because I'm not going to use control enter I don't want the rest of my pages to be vertically centered. I uh, just want the title page to be done. So I'm going to add in what's called a page break, a section a section break for a page. You do that under the, uh, the layout tab in Word. You'll see that there's a breaks option and you just hit next page. So that will create a new page for you. And then for your title page, Still on the Layout tab, under the Page Setup section, you're going to click on the little arrow down here in the corner. Brings up more options. You want to click on the Layout tab here. Vertical Alignment. You are going to center this page vertically. Now you have a properly formatted title page, and there are no extra blank lines, so you meet all document accessibility requirements for anyone who's using a screen reader application to make sure that they don't get those blank lines in there. You're also going to notice that uh, there's a period at the end of this title. You do not include periods at the end of titles or section headings in APA, so I'm going to delete that. And you want to make sure that your title is formatted uh, as a heading level 1 for APA. And you want it actually tagged, not just manually formatted in bold. So I'm going to take this. It's in the correct font, the correct uh, size and it's in bold and it's centered. I'm going to go to my formatting styles toolbar, find where it says heading level one, right click, update heading level one to match. And now I can uh, tag any of my heading level ones throughout the document using that formatting style. 
The next thing that I want to uh, fix on here, you'll notice that uh, for the front matter in this paper, they're using Roman numerals, uh, which is typical for a longer report for front matter. You use Roman numerals. However, you'll notice that uh, the Roman numerals have been applied to all of the pages in their document. So we want to avoid that. We want the title page to count as page one or page I in this case. And then any other front matter, which in this case would include the abstract and the table of contents, these are going to have the Roman numerals as their page numbers. And we want to make sure that the page numbers are in the upper left corner of the document for APA formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these page numbers that are down in the footer. We don't want them in there. I'm going to go up to my title page and I am going to uh, go to the uh, header and footer formatting toolbar, page numbers, and I'm going to use my current location and I will add one in and then I will simply left align it. If you don't want your um, page numbering to show up on all the other pages, you only want it on the uh, the uh, abstract, the, the rest of the front matter, but you don't want it to show up on your title page, there's a quick trick for that as well. Because this uh, title page is tagged as a new section, we can go into our header for section 2, which is the abstract here. Go to your header footer formatting. We do not want it linked to the previous. And now I can delete the page number from here, but it will still show up here. Now this page number is showing up as page I in uh, this document, as opposed to uh, page II. It should be page two. So I'm just going to highlight this page number here and format the page number. And I'm going to start it at II, page two. Now, after my front matter, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start my introduction in a new section. So I need to remove all of the, uh, the breaks that are in here. And I'm going to go back through the same process of going to my uh, layout, breaks, next page. Again, I do not want this to start on page number two. Uh, I don't want this linked to the previous, so I'm going to unlink it. And I'm going to reformat the page number here so that um, it uses numbers uh, for the formatting style instead of uh, the Roman numerals. So one, two, three. I'm going to start this at page one because it's the first page of the main body of the document. So now I have all my page numbering set up for my front matter and for the rest of the document. Alright, the next issue that I want to address with this here for formatting is this table of contents that we see. Uh, this student has created placeholders for all of the content that they are going to have in uh, their paper, which it's good to lay that out uh, and have that structure in mind, but this is not the way to do it because of two reasons. One, it's using a table to line this up manually and add the page numbers in manually. We want to avoid that because it won't automatically update the page numbers for us. It's also going to create a document accessibility issue. Uh, because tables uh, are notoriously difficult to properly format so that a screen reader application will pick them up. So I'm just going to delete that table of contents there altogether and show you how to add one in automatically that you can quickly update with a single uh, or the, with a couple of quick keystrokes as you add content to your paper. So I'm going to go to my first chapter which is the introduction. I'm going to make sure that this heading is tagged as a heading level one. It's the first heading in the chapter. It needs to be a heading level one. I'll scroll through, see if there are any other headings in this chapter. 
doesn't look like it, so we come to the literature review. That should also be a heading level one. And then this should be a heading level two. I'm going to make sure that my formatting style for heading two is updated to match that because it needs to be for APA the same font, same size, simply in bold and left aligned. I'll scroll through the lit review, tag all my heading level twos appropriately, and of course I do the same for adding any heading level threes and heading level fours, make sure that they match APA formatting and add them in. And we have another heading level two here, another one here. This is for the methodology. So this is going to be a new chapter in it. Sometimes you start a new page for the new, cha uh, new chapters in longer documents. Sometimes uh, for shorter ones, uh, 20, 30 pages, you might not start new billing pages. This is going to be a heading level one, not a heading level two. So I'll take that as a heading level one for the methodology chapter. References should also start on a new blank page and should be heading level one. I'll make sure that there's no extra blank lines here. There are, so I'll delete those and use a control enter to start the new page and get rid of any other blank lines that I have. And now I'm left with my references section. Now to add in that table of contents, I'm going to go back up to that blank page where I left the space. Microsoft Word has a great feature built in uh, under the references tab that lets you automatically add a table of contents to your document. This feature uh, is convenient when creating documents, but it's also uh, useful for making sure that your document is fully accessible and can be navigated using screen reader applications. Um, because you can go to the table of contents, find the section that you want, double click on it, and it'll take you there. So I'm gonna go to my references tab you'll see there's a table of contents option and I am going to do a custom table of contents so I can pick how many levels of headings that I want in this In this case I'll just pick heading level one two and three because that's all there is in this document I will add that in it automatically adds in a table of contents for me with the correct page numbers now my lit review starts on page six my methodology on 19 my references on 22 we're going to remember those page numbers for just a moment as I'm going to actually go down to my lit review which currently starts um, as a new section but uh, on the same page as uh, the, the document. I'm going to start this on a new blank page as you might see in a longer dissertation. Just control enter starts that on a new page and I'll scroll down here to my methodology and I'll start that on a new blank page and I just noticed that the page numbers are not showing up on the rest of these pages here so I gotta make sure that uh, that they do show up in the upper right corner or the upper left corner so I wanna make sure that this is linked to the previous and I'm gonna add in my page number current location make sure it shows up on all the pages there we go so now if I go to my lit review it's going to start on page 7 and my methodology is going to start on page 21 and my reference is on page 24 I'll come back to my table of contents though these page numbers are no longer correct easy fix for that now right click update field update page numbers only if you add new sections you could update the entire table and it will add in all the new section headings for you but in this case I'm just going to update page numbers only my table of contents is up to date I can now navigate the entire document The last thing that I want to show you on here is the formatting for this references list. 
So I have uh, double spacing or 1.5 line spacing for the rest of the document, but not here. I'm going to make sure that this is 1.5 line spacing as well, the same as the rest of the document. I'm going to make sure that I don't have extra space between my paragraphs, which it looks like there, uh, there are some extra blank lines added between some of these. We want to avoid that for accessibility purposes and just to keep things nice and consistent. Now you'll notice that some of these here, they, do, uh, they have different spacing between the paragraphs. Easy enough to fix that. I'll make sure that there's no extra blank lines first. I'll highlight the entire references list, go to my paragraph section, and I'll put my spacing before as zero, and my spacing after as auto. So now they are all spaced correctly. The last thing to do here is just to make sure that they all have a hanging indent. Again, under the paragraph section on your home tab in Word, just click on the little arrow here and click under special, hanging, okay. You have now properly formatted your document according to APA standards. You've removed all of the blank lines that are in there to help anyone who's using a screen reader. And you've made sure that uh, your entire document is fully accessible and has a nice, clean, easy to use table of contents that can be updated with a couple of quick mouse clicks.